So now we will talk about metal to ligand charge transfer transitions. Okay, these are known as MNCT. Yes. So in the previous video, I have already discussed LNCT. I will put the link in the description. You guys can go ahead, watch that video first and then come back to this video. Okay. So over here, I'm going to focus only on MLCT. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier also to you all, uh, in order to classify any complex under metal to ligand or ligand to metal, there are a few requirements that we have to know. Okay. So let us proceed with the requirements which are essential in order to have your metal to ligand charge transfer transitions. Okay. So requirements we are going to see with respect to the metal and of course with respect to the ligand. So first with respect to the metal what we are going to see over here is that over here what is happening? Listen carefully. Over here the metal is donating its electrons to the ligand. So obviously the metal has to have the electrons in order to donate them, okay. So first requirement over here is that metal should not be present in its highest oxidation state. Metal should not be present in its highest oxidation state, okay. Metal should have the electrons. Okay, so logically you can understand this particular factor wherein over here if metal is donating electrons, it cannot be present in its highest oxidation state. What happens to metals when they are present in their highest oxidation state? They basically lose all of their electrons. Okay, so if the metal itself does not have electrons, how will it donate electrons? Yeah, so that's why the requirement over here is that the metal should not be present in its highest oxidation state, which in literal sense means that the metal should have the electrons. Okay, so these are the requirements with respect to the metal. Now we will look at the requirements with respect to the ligand. The ligand over here should be aromatic. The ligand should be aromatic with low lying 5 star orbitals. The ligand should be aromatic with low lying 5 star orbitals. Okay, this point you can easily understand by using your energy level diagram. Okay, so the ligand, the, uh, the orbitals are going to split into sigma. Phi, these are your bonding orbitals, okay. Then you have N, which is non-bonding. And then you have Phi star and Sigma star, which are your anti-bond, okay. Similarly, metal will split into T2G and EG, okay. Now, over here, you know that the metal is going to donate electrons to the ligand, right. So, the donation can happen from T2G level or from EG level. But what is important with respect to the ligand is that this particular orbital of the ligand, the pi star orbital should be lower in energy. That's what we say over here, low lying pi star orbitals. So lower the pi star orbital, closer it will be to the orbitals of the metal. And that's how easily the electrons can jump from the metal orbital to the ligand orbital. Okay. So these are the requirements uh, in order to have metal to ligand charge transfer transitions. One common example uh, of a ligand which shows your metal to ligand uh, charge transfer transition is 2 to bipyridine. Okay, it is represented by B, P, Y. Okay, and the structure is this one. So this is a compound which is aromatic. Okay, along with that it also has your low lying uh, 5 star orbitals. Okay, so let me just complete the structure quickly. Yeah, this is the structure. Okay, so this is an example of a ligand which will uh, have your uh, metal to ligand charge transfer transitions. Along with this, you also have a 110 uh, phenanthrolin. Okay, 110 phenanthrolin, and you also have carbon monoxide. Okay, so these ligands also. Uh, form complexes wherein you will find metal to ligand charge transfer transitions.